Thank you, Dr. Obey, for inviting me again on this show. Our title is The Necessary of Traditional Values in the African Educational System. Hello, and welcome to Obey Podcast. I'm your host, Obehi Ewanfo, and I strongly believe that everyone has a story to share. Now let's get started with this episode. The modern African educational system is a colonial inheritance. Its history is anchored in the colonial rule where its development was first dictated by the need to meet religious and military needs. This, this was later followed by the necessity of training workers for the building of different colonial stations. The last phase was impelled by the need to have auxiliaries of the administration. In this last stage, the Africans will witness a diversification in the training offered by the colonial schools. However, this colonial system was designed in a line with the depiction of the black as inferior beings devoid of scientific values. This perception resulted in a tabula rasa, where the traditional va educational values were bedeviled. Such an inherited, inherited, inherited educational system can only be at longer heard with many aspects of the social order still sustained in traditional societies. Even though the new African authorities were against the doctrine of the inferiority of the Black developed by the Western colonial rule, the intellectual community was thus far unable to demonstrate the scientific nature of the religion and the epistemology which underpin traditional social and educational systems. Therefore, despite the fact that no society can develop without exposing inherited traditional value, the African educational system remains unable to fully conciliate the essential of these values. Thus, learners are deprived of the educational value bequeathed by their ancestors. Our purpose is to demonstrate the scientific basis of traditional educational values and the necessity of their inclusion in a new educational system. Among these traditional value, we have chosen to speak about two, the development of intuitive faculties and the anthropology of Ubuntu. As we said above, one of the bad legacy of the colonial system is the depiction of the African values, including religion, as superstitious and devilish. Fortunately, thanks to the chemical cosmological argument, the fallacy of this colonial doctrine can be today demonstrated. A cosmological argument is a demonstration of the existence of the first cause of this temporal universe by starting from the existence of its cosmos. However, 
the, cosmo the cosmological argument, the chemical cosmological argument differs from the various Western cosmological arguments developed since the time of Plato. Because the chemical cosmological argument extend, extends to the essential doctrines of a religion. It constitutes a natural systematic theology. Has developed thus far, it includes the following domains of theology. Theology proper, the doctrine of the Logos, anthropology, pneumatology, theodicy, cosmology, soteriology, etc. For all the purpose of this talk, the committee cosmological argument can be summarily introduced this way. As an aggregate of individual entities, our temporal universe is individual. The individual, the individual, and as an individual entity, this universe is the work of an individual cause. The individual nature of this cause implies the existence of other similar causes that are potentially or effectively causative. Under the hypothesis that every creation abides in its creator, an entity exists that includes and explains all the above deduced causes and is therefore the greatest possible being, the supreme being. The most high is transcendent, absolutely infinite, immutable and indivisible. Otherwise, there must be a principle of the immutability and divisibility of God greater than God, which is impossible, because God is the greatest possible being. Therefore, has the manifestation, has a manifestation of an individuality included in the indivisible most high, each potential and effective cause, that is, each child of God expresses the fullness of God, and this fullness we call the Logos. Due to his indivisibility, God, the Father, Mother, the Child of God, and the Logos, all three are inseparable in their substance, existence, and activity. This is solar trinity. This trinity coupled to the absolute transcendence of the most high implies that two principles directly and consciously participated in the creation process, the creator and the logos. Since the children of God taken around any one of them constitute a collective child of God, this one manifests also the Logos. Thus, the Logos, the true nature of the child of God, is the fullness of God within him and the fullness of God around him. God includes all reality. Any additional reality will deny this absolute nature. Therefore, the temporal universe is only an appearance of the celestial realm. Thus, its limitation of reality can only be illusory. A parallel correlation can be established between the chemical cosmological argument and the religion of ancient Egypt and Sumer, because culturally Sumer belonged to Africa. This can be illustrated 
by the following congruent elements of their theism. There is a most high God in Egypt called Sol Lord in the pyramid dance and one alert in the book in the Egyptian book of the dead. In Sumer, the most high was known as An or Anu. This most high is transcendent, has seen in the fact that prayers were never that directly addressed to him. Both civilizations contain the notion of the Logos, the divinity symbolized by the air, the breath, that is the word, the Logos. In both civilization, creation is the direct work of the creator and the Logos. In Egypt, it was Aton and Ptah, and in Sumer, it was Enkai and Enlil. As we said, this convergence can be extended to the essential doctrines of this ancient religion. The divinities of Congo, the Congo religion, are known thanks to a prayer of Congo prophet Simon Kumbangu. So we have in this religion Zambi Ampungu, the Most High, who is perceived as being transcendent. We have the creator called Gumbaloa. We have the Logos with the God Governor, like in Sumer. And he is called Pinanza. And this shows that, like the religion of ancient Egypt and Sumer, the Bukongo, the Congo religion, is also congruent with the Kemeti cosmological arguments. The scientific validity of the Kemeti cosmological argument is dictated, firstly, by its deductive approach an approach where it is not possible for the premises all to be true, while the conclusion is false. Secondly, the scientific validity of this cosmologic argument is confirmed by the mathematical, mathematical justification of the cosmology that evolves from it has the simplest explanation of the dynamics of the universe, gravitation, rotation, and translation at the astronomical, at the astronomic and subatomic levels, a theory of everything. The scientific nature of the chemical cosmological argument and its parallel correlation with the theologies of Memphis in ancient Egypt, Sumer, and Congo, imply that the, really, the imply that the religion of the civilization civilization is an exact science. This scientificity provides a solid and universal nature to the values infused into the social system by solar religion, the religion bequeathed by our ancestors. In the field of education, two of these values are the development of intuitive faculties and the anthropology of Ubuntu. For a long time, the Black have been seen as having not contributed to the development of science. A perception labeled as the ideology of the zero contribution of Africans. Thanks to the Kemeti cosmological argument, it can be demonstrated now that one, that one, the reason that led to the wrong perception, one of the reasons that led to this wrong perception was the inability of the philosophers to provide the statement of the naturalized epistemology of the African traditional knowledge. 
The nature of the scientific law of the West dictates that naturalized epistemology is the descriptive study of the textual discourses of its science. However, when it comes to African traditional knowledge, the difficulty of undertaking the descriptive study of its science resided in the fact that outside of ancient Egypt and Ethiopia, the texts stating this knowledge do not exist. However, we have demonstrated that due to its different configuration from the Western knowledge, the naturalized epistemology of the African traditional knowledge must be based on the descriptive study of the initiatory frame and their curriculum. Thus undertaken, this study reveals that the African traditional knowledge is based on the following truths. First, reality is ultimately spiritual. Second, true knowledge is included in the knowledge of God. Three, truth is revelation. Four, matter is only a limited perception of spiritual reality. It should be stressed that while the epistemological basis, the presupposition of Western science the main of which is that reality is ultimately material, can never be demonstrated. The basis of African traditional knowledge can be proven today, thanks to the chemical cosmological argument. Their validity can be demonstrated. This cosmological argument shows that all reality is included in God, who is the sum total of the celestial realm. Thus, any true knowledge is included in the knowledge of God. Thanks to Trinity, to solar Trinity, truth is seen. Please, thus, any true knowledge is included in the knowledge of God. Thanks. To the to Trinity. Truth is revelation from God. It has been demonstrated also that the phenomenon of these universe are only appearances of celestial reality. This demonstration of the scientific nature of the foundation of African traditional knowledge implies that African educational system should not be any more cornered to the model bequeathed by the colonial social system. And that it is time for the value that meant the fame of the Africa of yesterday's time to inspire nowadays educational system of the black and be included in them. Two concepts are ensconced in the educational system of the West. These concepts were developed by two famous French scientists. Rabelais sustained the notion of a well-fared head while Montaigne advocated the idea of a well-done head. As, as a colonial inheritance, African educational system gravitates around these two approaches of pedagogy. Speaking of the setting of the Westerner, Ballester insists that his culture Develop, flourish for centuries in an environment where reason exercised 
is totalitarian influence. That's about the mentality used in the West, Ballester adds, the Westerner is in a pronounced manner logical, rationalist, voluntarist, critical, intellectual. He is inclined to reason rather than to the soul. This mental conf configuration of the Western, Westerner resulted in an educational system which, according to the de description of the same author, is a case where all that escapes more or less to a accurate, precise explanation which seems to be shrouded in mystery draperies, aesthetical and religious intuition, and will immediately be put aside and labeled as belonging to the world of the soul. This attitude of the educational system of the West vis-a-vis -vis religious intuition is understandable as religion in the West is only a system of, the belief, of beliefs held to with ardor and faith. Due to this perception, a clear divide will finally we finally settle between science and religion in the West, which was not the case in ancient Egypt. Contrary to the Westerners' perception of the training of reason, which finally reject, rejects any direct contribution other than heuristic of religion, Sin has a mere belief in the search for scientific truth. The essential doctrine of African traditional religion, at least in its original form preserved in Bukongo, are deductive coherent truths. That is an exact science. Moreover, the freedom of the soul was the highest tenets of Egyptian epistemology. This freedom is also advocated in Congo tradition, where it is affirmed through its corollary, which is the immortality of the soul. It naturally follows that contrary to Western paradigm, the traditional African educational system was first and foremost concerned with the ability to be receptive to the revelations coming from higher planes of existence, to develop intuitive qualities. The black, the blacks conceive reason not as an activity of the cerebral cortex of the brain, but as the result of the activity of the soul. It is usual to hear a Congo say, a thought came to me. This implies that reason is perceived by him as a revelatory activity, a series of direct and or indirect revelation coming from higher planes. This perception of reason is also confirmed among the Yoruba of Nigeria. This revelatory perception of reason coupled to the doctrine of the freedom of the soul implies that the aim of the educational system in the context of the African traditional society is to liberate the soul from the shackles of the body. This liberation was obtained in the initiatory society for the purification of thought. Therefore, 
an educational system that neglect the freedom of the soul that is a, pedagogic, a pedagogical approach that fails to include incentives and approaches for the development of the intuitive or revelatory faculties works contrary to the direction indicated by the traditional doctrine of reason. It works counter our deep scientific epistemological convictions. Congo initiation involved three stages, the highest initiations. Those stages are the death, four stages, not fifth, four stages, death, resurrection in the beyond, life among the ancestors and rebirth to this plan of, the, of existence. At the first stage, death is the departure of the candidate from the, from the community to the world of the ancestors. Thus, this symbolical death marked the entrance to the world of the initiates. Death was immediately followed by resurrection in the beyond, in the Pemba, the world of the ancestors. After resurrection ensued a period of testing during which the candidate was encouraged to abandon his vile personality, his ancient personality. He had, he had the personality he had before his introduction in the world of the initiate. At the hand of this first stage, the initiate having a new personality, rece having received sacred teachings, he was supposed to be in contact with the holy ancestor whose presence during the initiate's initiation was symbolized by his initiators. This first stage, I said, will hand by the rebirth of the new initiate which is his return to the community. The new initiate, like his predecessors, is now aware of the accompanying presence of the holy ancestor that will never fail him as long as his acquired pur purity is preserved. This accompanying presence of illuminated ancestors expresses the concept of the Lagos as the completeness of God around the human being, and it constitutes the justification of the saying, a thought came to me, the revelatory nature of reason. History of science teaches us that the evolution of knowledge can be cumulative or revolutionary. While the first schema is the usual, the usual one and implies peripheral changes in the scientific paradigm, the second schema involves overcoming epistemological obstacles. That are, that are feature of a theory that impedes scientific progress. That intuition or revelatory faculties is a powerful tool to vanquish epistemological obstacles is seen in the revolutionary discovery of the circular nature of the structure of benzene by Friedrich August Kekule, thanks to a dream he had during a nap where he saw a snake biting his tail. This intuitive discovery brought a revolution in chemistry, the discovery of organic chemistry. 
this ability of intuition or revelatory faculties illustrates the fact that the integration of the incentives and approaches for the development of these faculties in the African modern educational system will enhance our contribution in the development of science and even in bringing new revolutionary dis discoveries. Another contribution that traditional values can make to the African modern educational system is in the domain of anthropology. As we have seen above, the chemical cosmological argument demonstrates that the Logos is the true identity of the children of God. The Logos the fullness, is the fullness of God in and around the child of God. The phenomena of the temporal realm are only appearances of celestial realities. It then follows that the moon too, the human being, is only a limited manifestation of his celestial reality as a child of God. Thanks to the chemical cosmological argument, it is thus established that the true nature of the mutu is the logos. Therefore, the double nature of the logos implies that the mutu is in reality the divinity which is in him, but also the divinity which is around him. That's the true. Muntu is identical to the spiritual reality that surrounds him is a scientific demonstrable fact. It is the basis of the doctrine of the Ubuntu, which implies that the love, the care for the I must be reflected in the care for the earth, for the community. This anthropology diverges totally from the individualistic and materialistic perception of human being that the Western tailored educational system tried to inculcate to the African people. To incorporate this anthropology of Ubuntu in the modern educational system will result in more co cohesive societies. A society, societies where every human being cares about the environment in which he lives. No society has been developed without ensconcing the values embedded in its tradition. One of the failures of the educational system of the Blacks is in not capitalizing on traditional educational values as an, an indispensable basis for a better development of Africans. At the core of this botch lies a seeming impossibility to save the so the superior epistemological and religious scientific paradigm on which these values are anchored. Based on this superior nature, we contend that the new educational system of Africa must integrate the values cherished in traditional system. These values include the development of intuitive or revelatory faculties and the anthropology, anthropology of Ubuntu. This new approach will lead to a more efficient academic output due to the superior ability of intuition to break epistemological obstacles and 
to the um, it will lead to the development of citizens city citizens anchored in the necessity of car caring about their society and environment i really do appreciate that uh, and this is this is important i, I think it touches the core of um, yeah, of of us as a people in that um, education is everything it touches everything it touches uh, some of the most important part of our existence because um, in the school that is where we configure the head of the people if we want to put it like that in a very brute sense uh, because what we put to the head of the people continue to condition the people even when they become adults so for this reason it is important that uh, we understand our educational system because if we get it wrong at that point when these people grow old they are going to continue to perpetuate the same idea that is planted in their head but just so that people would understand why it is important to even talk about issues like this like education in africa and among africans today i want you to give me an assessment of the current african educational system this might be only within the Africans within Africa, uh, the Africans abroad. Because the same thing that is happening among Africans in Africa is also happening to many Africans abroad because we are all facing the same issue. The African educational system today is mainly an inheritance of the colonial system. Few things have been changed in that system. It is a system that was based on the epistemology of the Western people, where reality is perceived as being material, full stop. So there is no direct contribution, for example, of religion to the educational, to, to the scientific system. Why? Because religion is perceived as being a belief while science is perceived as being inductive based on reason. So the, the, there is a complete divide between religion and science, between religion and the educational system. While in ancient ages, we learned that religion underpin everything. The Congo system, traditional system, teaches us also that Religion was the basis of everything, even the educational system. Why? Because in this system, religion was perceived as being a science. And this we can demonstrate today, that religion was an exact science. And this explains why in ancient Egypt, is underpinned every knowledge. So we we have inherited a system which is which was implemented just in order to serve the colony, to serve the administration, to serve the masters. And this is what is being kept on up today a system of education where after finishing the, his study, the young man were, stay, were, uh, wait for a job, becomes a job hunter instead of being a job creator. So we have to change this system. By being cut away from our epistemological basis where soul, where it was perceived as free from the body, we are cut from the intuitive faculties. Now, the intuitive faculties is what make of a man a great scientist. We we are a great we are great scientists not because we know more things, but because we can reason out of the box and bring new solution. And intuition is an instrument that can lead to this. 
There is another botch introduced by the colonial system of education. We usually hear that when a nerder dies in Africa, it is a library which is lost. This is wrong, because when an elder die, dies, he never tell, tell you that he dies. He tells you that he go. He goes in a tree, which means that he is still there. You can reach to, reach to him and get the knowledge he had. I was working on my theory of gravitation, which results from the chemical cosmological argument. So I had all the philosophical theories settled. The only remaining things were mathematical. I was unable to work at mathematics because I left school mathematics since 20 years ago. So I began to study again mathematics in order to be able to, to, to put, to work on the mathematical side of that theory of gravitation. So at one time, I was blocked. And what I did, I used prayer. I turned to my ancestors and I told them, I know that even if there are no mathematicians among, among you, you know people who are more advanced than you who are conversant with that knowledge. I want you to get in touch with them in order for, you, for them to inspire me. For this prayer, I was led to state that theory, which is 1,000 times easier than the theory of general gravitation of Albert Einstein. This I came to do thanks to the intuitive faculties. So we have to rethink our educational system. Thank you so much for that. Um, I think there is a lot of interest here in, in what you're saying. In fact, this is, I think this is the, the, the third or the fourth time that we are having this conversation now around your studies. I think they are very important. We are told that we are the children of God. But we are also told that God created everything that we see. But if we are children of God, are we not also supposed to create? I mean, if we are children of God, are we not supposed to be able to do a lot of things instead of just taking and consuming, just consuming? Because God wasn't just consuming. God was creating from what is available. I think if we are children of God, we're also supposed to be able to create, looking at what is available around us. Uh, when it comes to the question of life and death, I think it's something that we need to talk about more often. Because sometimes we don't understand these things. We don't, we don't, we don't even have the minimal idea of it, based, of course, on our education again. Because now we can see that nothing actually is lost in this world. Everything is available. But are we able to tap into it? Are we able to connect? And connect again now becomes even more important because how do we connect? Is it that for me to connect to uh, the infinite potentials in this world, I need to, first of all, deny myself. I need to renounce who I am and then pretend to be someone else so that I can then connect. Or I should be able to know that I am already connected. Because I am a child of somebody who was also a child of somebody who was a child of somebody. If I disconnect, if I detach myself from that lineage, I am going to be moving in a circle. I will never know how to connect. This is one of the major problems that we are having in Africa today. That many people have been told that their ancestors are evil. That their ancestors are bad. Their ancestors are demons. And what these people, the Africans, are doing is that they are praying against these ancestors of theirs. Therefore, they are, connect, they are detaching themselves from their own root. And when they have problems, they cannot think back to where they are coming from. Like you did, no? 
when you couldn't find the solution, you pray to your ancestors to help you resolve that issue. But in this case, if we detach ourselves, how are you able to do that? You will, of course, go to ask somebody who told you that they know better than you, come and help me. When I, there is an infinite potential that we can all tap into by first of all understanding who are you? Where are you coming from? I think this is important. Yes, it is very, very important. And as I said, there are two things that we have first to solve. One, the, the first thing is, is that we have to know, not to solve, but to know. We have to know that the true nature of our religion is scientific nature. Our true, in its true nature, our religion is an exact science. This is fundamental. Why I say this is fundamental? Without this knowledge, you cannot justify how traditional science, you cannot justify how traditional technology. I used to tell people that when the white people came here, we were in advance of him in the domain, such as the domain of communication, the domain of, uh, of um, transportation, the domain of uh, uh, going from one point to another. When you take a country like France, which, which has a centralized government, you cannot govern France if you don't have to technology a technology of locomotion, and a technology of communication. You can't. It is impossible. Now, the Kingdom of Congo, for example, was four times bigger than, than France. And we are told that people were communication, communicating through tom-toms, which is wrong. The point here is that they were a technology of communication. They were a, communica a technology of locomotion which cannot be justified by using the Western paradigm. So that's where comes the importance for us to know that our religion is an ex is a science, because thanks to this religion, we can prove that our science was a valid one. Our technology was is a valid one. Our science is based on the fact, the demonstrable fact that reality is spiritual. And I have proven, proven it with the chemical cosmological argument. We reach to the conclusion that all reality is in God. And because all reality is in God, and because there cannot be an additional reality, because any additional reality will create an entity greater than the greatest possible being, that, that is greater than God, which is impossible. So the material is only an appearance of the spiritual. The visible is only an appearance of the invisible. Reality is spiritual. It is not material. This has been demonstrated through deductive reasoning. At the same time, the white people cannot demonstrate that reality is material. So why should we, should be, why we should be bowing to this domination that you have to prove your basis from our party? No, the Chinese, the Chinese went to, went to the who? the World Health Organization, and they said acupuncture is a technology used by our ancestors. It cannot be defined from your Western anatomy. Uh, it is valid. This is the theory that lies, that underpin these, uh, these practice. And the WHO has recognized the use of acupuncture for more than 50 diseases. So we have to do the same at this moment. Having the tool, which is the chemical cosmological argument, we can today prove that reality is spiritual. Therefore, our approach of science, 
our approach of technology, which is based on the fact that reality is spiritual, is demonstrable, while your basis are not demonstrable. So you cannot, you cannot shun our approaches on the on the basis of yours. So these are the things we need to know. We, we need to claim the scientificity of our religion as being an exact science. And from this point of view, we have to claim the validity of our traditional science and of our traditional, traditional technologies. And then we have to move back to these values as being the one which are fundamental to us. And on the educational level, this will mean different setting, setting the paradigm for the development of intuitions or revelatory faculties and putting back values such as Ubuntu and so on. I have Thank taken only those two, but these are, there are also other values. Mm, in fact, I was just uh, thinking of asking you what are actually the real value of African traditional system that we are talking about here? Because we are actually talking of the overhauling of the system because we can see now that if education is a light, if education is giving the people the instrument to liberate themselves, and if the education we have in Africa today is the one that has been given to us by those who have oppressed us, it doesn't make any sense that that education is going to liberate you. It will mean that they are, they are giving you the weapon to kill them. It doesn't happen. So it is natural that the education we have in Africa is actually a disinformation, a diseducation. It's a kind of, um, call it indoctrination into a system that is foreign, that is foreign to Africa. That is why we are moving in a circle. We cannot find our way because the education is created to keep us in perpetual loop of ignorance. Now, when we are talking about African value, I want you to tell me more about that. What do we really want people to understand? Because again, I want to repeat, the only people that are going to save us are ourselves. Nobody else is coming. So it is important that we try to grab all the knowledge that we can about us on how to remake ourselves. Because no one else is coming even in the next 1,000 years. So help me understand the value that we are talking about here. There are two words that you use that kept my attention. You spoke about light and you spoke about freedom. And those two things are at the core of the educational system. But what does light mean for the African people? Light from the African people come from the ancestors. Light is the illumination brought by the ancestor. That is why I said that for the for the, the Bantu people, for the Yoruba people, to think is to turn toward the ancestor in hell in, in order to have an idea. And they use the usual saying is a thought came to me. A thought came to me. An African we don't say, I conceive that I had in, in our tongues, in our languages, it, it is not say so. We usually say that thought comes to us because we understand thinking to be revelatory. We understand that light comes from the, ancestor, the ancestors. Reality is from the invisible. So we have to tape reality from the invisible to the visible. But the problem is that we have been told that reality is material. So the white people has put, did put us in a box, in a cage. We are in a cage. We have to think just in the cage. We are cut from our ancestors. We are cut from light, we are cut from those who are supposed to bring 
to bring us near to the truth. So this is the, the, the one thing. All these also mean that how a concept of human being has been distorted. In most African, the African we tell you, when temples, classic temples, made a research among the Bantu people, he realized that according to the Bantu people, the human being is not what we see. The human being is real, is really a spiritual reality. It is the soul. So what we see is just an appearance. So the educational system was caring for the true being, the invisible being. The educational system was trying to connect the African to the reality of his being. And that has been lost because we have been set in a cage. So the second word you mentioned is freedom. For me, that freedom means firstly and mostly the freedom of the soul from the shackles of the body. This is why in ancient Egypt, the soul was always depicted as a bird or a butterfly flying above the head in order to mean that the soul, which is the principle of perception, is not within the body, which is which means that the power, the principle of perception is not conditioned by the limitation of the body, like in the West. No, the soul is free. And because the soul is free, it can leave the CB company of the body and go to higher realm and bring us knowledge. So the white people will laugh at such a conception, but we have the tools today to prove to him that this is the true conception because we can prove the basis of this reasoning while you cannot prove to us that reality is material. So those two things, light and freedom, require of us to reason out of the cage where we have been set by the white people. For the sake of the argument, those that are listening to us, uh, what we understand now that uh, the earliest European, actually the founder of the European democracy or civilization, as we would call them, the Greek, were yeah. students in Africa. They came to learn in Africa. Maybe if the library of Alessandra was not burned down, I don't know whether this is accident or a deliberate attempt, maybe the argument would be different today. Because the book that were in the library was not written in Europe and brought to Africa to be stored there. These were African records. And this again is, lo is only logical. Like, if there is a library in the United States, this library is not about Europe, it's about the people of the United States. So if there is a library in Africa, this library contains a document of the African people. Mm -hmm. If a lot of people those who became the master of Europe came to study in Africa. It has a lot to tell about where African people are coming from. But if the people have been miseducated, then they can believe that they are not coming from anywhere. They are actually coming from the imagination of the European, that they are mm -hmm. product of European charity. But this is wrong. It's purely wrong. I am uh, sort of wondering, how was education actually approached in Asian Africa? We are cutting out the European, not the European influence now, before the European ever had the time to conquer Africa and turn it into POW. We are POW to the European. They do whatever they like to us. We are their prisoners of war. 
But I am talking of before we became their prisoners of war, how was education approached in Africa? Thank you. To speak about education in Africa before the arrival of the of white people is to speak about the initiatory system. By the initiatory system here, I mean the highest one. There were three kinds of initiation in Africa. The, div the initiation into the divine mystery, which was the school of the formation of the prophets. And the education into the civil mysteries, which was the school, the, 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 the university, the traditional university. And there were the martial, the martial schooling. So there were three kinds of schooling. The, the sacerdotal schooling, civil schooling, and martial schooling. Now, the ancient ages was the land of the spiritual schooling. They had the mastery of that schooling. And the corridor that goes from Ethiopia to Benin, including all, all those, uh, the, the area between, was the mastery of the martial initiation. And this is seen up to now. While Sumer, which belongs culturally to Africa, had the mastery of the mark of the civil initi initiation as seen in the mastery of astronomy. So they were those three kinds of education, but the civil and the martial initiation were underlie, underpinned by the spiritual education by the first the first initiation. This means that when someone went to learn medicine, he had first to learn divine mystery, and then he will learn medicine. So divine mystery was fundamental. Why it was fundamental? It was fundamental because the highest technology was developed through the purification of thought. I, three, two days ago, I gave an example of this. There is something which is called among the, among the ego, chi. The chi is a spirit and the chi is also a power. The same concept of the of the chi is seen among the Congo people. They call it nkisi. Nkisi means spirit. Nkisi means power. The highest nkisi, the highest chi, is God Himself. And the purpose of religion is to use the chi as spirit in order to develop the chi as power in us. To use the divine nkisi in order to develop our, our power, divine power, as in his laws. Now, this means that the chi or the NKC is also our technology. Now, in order to develop that technology, you need, at the highest point, you need purification of thought. Let me give you an example. Someone who is an initiate of the divine mystery, he can develop the power of teleportation. He can take you and tell you, close your eyes, you close your eyes, you disappear from, from Brazzaville where I am and find yourself to Nigeria. That was being done in Africa, teleportation. But in order for that elder to reach this ability, it, it, it usually takes a lot of time, a lot of purification. And usually when he reaches this ability, he is very old. In order to transmit this ability, which is for him an assess of the family, he will use, he will have to transmit it, not for divine mystery as he, did, as he got it, but for civil mystery, for human mystery, but the, the, which is for faith in matter 
are and in Halyan Sesa. So he will take a material thing, he will take a young person, and he'll have him believe that teleportation is due to this thing and to the ancestor. By if you keep on res respecting what I give you as orientation, as ethical norms, the ancestor will be with you and this thing will work. And he will take that young man, he will use his power of teleportation. They will be traveling one time, two times, three times. The faith will grow in the young man that that thing works. While in reality, it is, it is the prayer of the elder that is working. So if he repeat this process many times, the faith will grow in the young man that that power of telekinesis, that chi is working and it will remain as a power to be used, to be transmitted in the family. So we have now two kinds of power in presence. The power obtained for purification of thought, which is the original power, and the power obtained for faith, which is the consequence of the second. So in Africa, the divine mystery was the higher source of the acquisition of technology. This is why the knowledge of divine mystery was basic to a, to in the educational system. Wherever, whatever be your spirituality, you have to start first of all with the divine mystery in order to develop all to develop your faculties. So that was the kind of education we had. The educational system was based on religion. That was possible, <coughs> excuse me, that was possible because I, I have demonstrated to you that in reality, that religion was an exact science. That religion was an exact science. The one people who went to have an education, his purpose was not his own development, but the development of his community. In fact, that education was very expensive that the whole clan has to contribute in order to send someone in at the initiation. And what he was gaining was for the elevation of the community. So the initiate was working for the elevation of the society. We must mention also one thing. Education in the West is time consuming. I had to work, you have to work at least 20 years in order to become a PhD, for example. It is time consuming in order to become an initiate, a, a full accomplished initiate. You have just to spend nine months. Nine months, you have developed your intuitive faculty. You can communicate with your ancestors. You are a fully transformed person, person in nine months. So you see, what a lot of time we are losing with the educational system of the West. So the educational system among the ancestor consisted in training this, in freeing the soul from the shackles of the body in order for the person to be in conscious communication with the illuminated ancestors, which is the that was the nature of the All right. education project. All right. Now, let's look at the, the, the function itself, the role of education itself. Why was it important to get education? What does it mean? What is the role education plays in a society? Edu the, the, the role of education is not separated from the very role of man here how man came to be here in the lower plane. 
The cosmetic cosmological argument demonstrates that God is love and God is truth. Being love, being truth, the love of God for his children is not force. That means that man, the, the, the children of God are endowed with free will. So they are free to turn away from God. And when you turn away from God, you fall in darkness and chaos. So the purpose of creation was to bring God out of, out, of, out of darkness and chaos. And the educational system, the role of the educational system is inscribed in that creative process to enable the the human being to get out of spiritual darkness, out of chaos, in order to regain the divine dimension they have lost. So it is all, everything is linked. Edu the educational system is only a part of the global system where, where religion shows to us how to regain what we have lost, our divine childhood. So that is the role of education, creating, creating man anew. But creation doesn't mean making something go from nothingness to existence. No, creation just means awakening something which is, which is dormant there. So education is awaking the German faculties which are there in us as children of God. As children of God, you say that we, we, we have creative faculties. We are gods. As children of God, we are divine. And education help us develop our divinity. All right. And this was supposed to also uh, help us to live better life uh, so that uh, because if we look at the world that we are talking about now at least looking at Africa it is so in its his days the technology that we have there and the one we have now is different no so by education it could we it, it could also mean that we are using our knowledge to improve our lives so that we can live better we can live more quality life so that instead of maybe running around in the jungle like uh, our ancestors did, did many years ago before they learned how to build houses, learn how to say, okay, instead of going to the, to the pond uh, or going to the, to the stream to get water, we can actually dig a, a, a pond in our, in our environment where we are living and get water from, from the ground so that instead of fetching water and putting it outside we can actually put the water connect the pipe so that when you need water from your home you can just touch it and water will come for you is this supposed to be the role of education or is this something out of it education has to bring a new kind of technology it education has to do with betterment of life a better way of life because we are, we deserve this as children of God. We deserve a better life. The technology we have here for the time being is different from the one the Egyptian had. And the technology we will develop will be different from the technology developed by the white people. Why? Because they are relying in the paradigm which is expensive, which is time consuming which is not environmental friendly. Uh, it is my conviction that by the time the, the black people resort to his religion has a scientific assess, resort to his epistemology, which is based on the fact that reality is spiritual, he will bring new technology a new technology which will be cost efficient, which will be environmental friendly, and which will be 
very expensive. This is my conviction because this is what I have experimented myself in my life. So education doesn't 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 mean that we are not going to, we are going to, to live the way our ancestors lived. No, no, that's not the case. We are going to improve the technology of the Western people, but eventually we will abandon that technology in order to bring new technology with, 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 which, which is seen. When, when, you, when you study ancient Egypt, with all we have as arsenal, technological arsenal, we cannot develop pyramids. So that was an advanced technology. So we are going to bring new technology, and that technology will be will be cost efficient, will be ex expensive, which would be uh, uh, not uh, uh, expensive, not too much. No, we, we, we'll be, we'll be not really expensive. Oh, I'm messing things. Will, will, will be less expensive. Oh, yes, less expensive, not costly. It will not be costly as the, the, the present one, and it will be environmental friendly. All right. That is my conviction, and this conviction is dictated by the past technology and by the fact that this technology will be based on the fact, the demonstrable fact that reality is spiritual. Let me take, give you an example here. I live here in Brazzaville. During the colonial time, they were a traditional medicine uh, physician called Ibondo. And one time, the colonial ruler of the locality came and find the black people surrounding someone. And he he arrived there and he saw Ibondo performing um, a surgical intervention on a person. And just I know, at open air, the belly of the person was opened. He took away the disease. He took two leaves that he put in a cross manner. He kept on, he, 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 he put his hand on those leaves and the wound disappeared. Now, the white people arrested Ibondo, and he told him, you have to show me how you did it. They tortured him in order for him to tell them how he did it. And finally, he told them, come tomorrow, I'm going to show you. When they came tomorrow, Ibondo was died, had died. It has gone. So you see, that episode show you the advance we had in medicine compared to the white people. We knew anesthesia before them. We knew how to how to open the skull and take away the disease before them. And we knew many things that they don't even know up to now. And that knowledge was supposed to be passed on. Now somebody might be asking why. Of course, why is already obvious. Uh, we had uh, an encounter that uh, sort of uh, disconnected us from where we are coming from. So we are ignorant of even where we are currently standing. And this why, is the fruit of the miseducation. That's why I tell you the purpose of education. The first thing we have to do is to get our people out of the cage. By the time they have you believe that life is material, that soul is in the body, it means that you are cut from those who have that knowledge, that advanced knowledge. But let me tell you something. In reality, because the soul is immortal, that knowledge is immortal. Those persons who detain those knowledge, they cannot go higher if they don't transmit that knowledge. So what we have to do is to put the necessary condition for them to transmit that knowledge. 
And that ca- condition is the divine mystery. We have performed people who for the purification of their thought will be able to communicate with those ancients who are still there. They are waiting. It belongs to us to get in touch with them. And by the time we do this, they will go higher. That is, that is, that is powerful. It means, it means, like we were saying before, that we are all connected. We really yes. are all connected. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we are is- all connected. The living of this plane live for the ancestors. And the ancestors live for the living of this plane. So we are connected. That connection has been broken by the white people. But the possibility of reconnecting is still there. And we, are, we must work on this yeah. point. It will. It will work. But how do we get this knowledge into the mind of the people, this purification, this um, idea of, first of all, understanding who we are, that we are not as described as who we are, that we really have our leg planted in this world, that we have been here before uh, uh, many other people that are there, that we are not fake, we are really here. How do we say this idea into the mind of Africans so that they can wake up because I remember one thing you did say in one of our interview that um, those who that many people are awake are sleeping. What we just need to do, maybe for example, the child cried that is a lion. You don't kill the lion in the dream. You need to wake no. up the the child or whoever it is. Then the person realizes that the lion really is not there because the person is see the lion because it's asleep. Many of us, we are asleep, and I think the knowledge, the light, help the people to wake up so they can live a higher life. How do we do that today, looking at, think, uh, looking at the circumstances that we are living in? I think it does, that's what you are doing, inviting people like me and others also I know to come and to speak to our people. We have to awake our people from the spiritual sleep and the scientific sleep in which they are. The ancient Egypt told us that after 6,000 years from the start of their civilization, the solar civilization will awake again. That means since their civilization started minus 4,000 years, if we put, we add 6,000 years, we arrive to the year 2000. So according to the Egyptian, the black man, the black, the black people must awake, must be awaking since the year 2000. I for one know that this is true. We are awake because now we can prove that our religion is a science and a, 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 as is an, an exact science. We can prove that the epistemology, the, the basis of our epistemology are solid and scientific. So we have to capitalize on many things. We have to capitalize on the weak points of the Western paradigm. First of all, on the religious side, we have to capitalize on the fact that their concept of God is a wrong one and doesn't work. They define God as the supreme being creator, which is impossible because either creation happened outside of God or inside of God. If creation happens inside of God, then God changes which is impossible because if he changes, there must be a principle of his change which is greater than him. If creation happens outside of God, then that creation added to God will result in a being greater than God. So their theism 
is a logical impossibility. We have to capitalize on this. We have to capitalize on the fact that the religion has defined by the West is a belief. So those are the two weak points of the, of the religion in the West. And we have capitalized on this and teach our people this truism that yours is the highest theism, yours is the highest religion, which is an exact science. So you have to work to bring the scientific dimension, dimension to your change of religion right now. So this is, must be done. The other thing, we have to capitalize on the fact that their science is based on a belief. They cannot prove to us that reality is material. No, they can't. It's impossible. We can prove that reality is spiritual. So this is a powerful argument for us to tell to them, we are not going to follow your way again. And um, this is on, on the scientific level. On the political level, things will also change. For example, since our religion is a science, it means that our religion must frame the way of our politics. Democracy was known in Africa. Democracy was known in the Kingdom of Congo. That, but that democracy was implemented within the frame of theocracy. If you take the kingdom of God, the, the kingdom of Congo, and if you take ancient Egypt, these those are two kingdoms where it's, it wasn't the king who was the true ruler. That is false. The true ruler was the high priest ruling through the king. And at the lower level, there were democracy. So democracy has not to be something to be important for the West. It is something to we must to, 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 we have to rework by starting from our religious value. And let me and, and we can speak also of capitalism. Capitalism has been has been known in Africa. We have capitalism in the Kingdom of Congo, but not a, the savage capitalism that was, that was brought by the Western people. If you take the elder who were making business in Congo, they will tell you, King Koeno Mbalu, Kiluta Katula, Ikonda Yika, which means beware of the part of the partner of the client. It is, if it is too much, take away the excess. If it is too less, put what lacks, lacks. So it means that in business, you must be honest. You and I know that business is not done this, this way in, uh, in Europe. Business in Europe means also taking the advantage of the other, even if it means to lie. So you see, we had strong values, economic, political, religious, scientific values, and we have to prove their superior, superior nature and capitalize on this. Thank you so much for that. There is a high value here. I appreciate the time and also the contribution. All right, now, what would be your final thoughts here to conclude the conversation that we have had today? My final thought is this one. We are written, we must know that the educational system we have from the West was meant to serve the interests of the white people. It was so it was thought according to the conviction they have in the West that reality is material, that money is material, and then there are no such things as the contribution of the ancestor in the daily life. 
we had to rethink that educational process and infuse traditional values. We have spoken about two values, the intuitive, the development of intuitive peculiarities and the anthropology of Ubuntu. By bringing back those two dimensions in our educational system, we will, it will result in young people who will be very competitive in the field of science, who will bring new discoveries, and we will bring a kind of African people who will be caring for the society. Doing this is a must for us today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Welcome. If you enjoy this podcast, make sure you subscribe so you never miss any of our future episodes. Rate our review Obehead podcast and share with your friends who might need it. I remain Obehead Ewafo. Thank you so much for listening. I'll talk to you in the next episode.